Hi there, this is Mar Haddad here again. In this uh, lecture, I have to speak about the theory behind RIP. So we will understand everything we need to know in RIP before we start doing the labs. So let's go directly for the points that I have uh, written them over here. So what is RIP? RIP, the name of RIP means Routing Information Protocol. So this is the abbreviation of RIP. So in case you see Routing Information Protocol, just remember and know that it is RIP. So RIP is an IGP distance vector routing protocol. Now someone can say, yeah, what is IGP and what is distance vector? That's something I have explained in other course uh, when I was speaking about uh, the uh, uh, routing on uh, Microtik from scratch. But in case you don't know, I can explain it to you briefly. So you have two types of uh, routing protocols. You have external routing protocol and you have internal. So what does it mean here? In case you are doing a configuration for a routing protocol inside your company. So that means you have the authority or you have the privilege to work on the whole routers on your network. So that's what we call it internal gateway protocol, which is IGP. So IGP means routing protocols, which works inside an autonomous system. So inside the, your network, for example, if you work in a bank or in a hospital, or you work in a hotel, or you work just in a company, all of those, you need to run IGP, which is Internal Gateway Protocol. And RIP is a routing protocol which works internal. So that means you have to configure RIP inside your network, right? So there is also the external routing protocol. And that's, for example, when you want to connect two ISPs together, then you use external. So you have one autonomous system, which is, this is an ISP1, and you have another autonomous system that's an ISP2. You are running inside the ISP IGP, something like OSPF or RIP, so you run inside of it, but once you want to connect those two ISPs together, then in this case, you have to use EGP, external gateway protocol. And the only routing protocol which works external, that means to connect two autonomous systems together, is called BGP, border gateway protocol. And that's the routing protocol of the internet. So that's the only routing protocol that we have it as external and everything else, it is internal. So now we understand that we have internal gateway uh, protocol, which uh, works inside our network and we have external, which connect the two autonomous systems. And uh, we understand that uh, there is only one routing protocol called border gateway protocol, BGP, which works on that. But what is the distance factor? Because here we said, IGP, Distance Vector Routing Protocol. So inside the umbrella of the IGP, which is the internal, you have, so this is the, the umbrella, you have two types of routing protocol. You have Distance Vector and you have Link State. All right, so both of types, they are under the umbrella of the IGP. That means routing protocol, which works inside our autonomous system. So RIP is a distance factor routing protocol. Type of uh, link state uh, routing protocol is OSPF, for example. All right, so this is a type. So what's the difference between distance vector and link state? Actually, distance vector is simpler and uh, you can configure it without you really require to have a lot of technical knowledge, while link state is a bit more complex. So that's the main difference. Of course, there are much more difference when we speak about the technical things, how they work. So that's something we will cover it later when we start to speaking about RIP. Something like what is the metric on the distance vector? Of course, on the instead, we're not going to cover it in this course. I have another course speaking about OSPF. If you wish, you can join it and you can get knowledge about it. All right, so that's what is the distance vector routing protocol. So that means it is an IGP distance vector routing protocol. Now they said, all right, distance vector. So we have distance and we have the vector. What does means distance and vector? So let me just explain it to you very fast. Now distance is how far is the destination and vector means in which direction. So let's say that this router over here, router one, 
We say that we have enabled drip routing protocol here on router 2 also and on router 3 also. We will know later that every router will send the routing updates to the other neighbor and then at the end router 1 knows about this network 3.3.3.0 network. All right. So when we say distance, that means how far is the destination. So router one, we say, okay, I want to go to 3.3.3.3 or to the 3.3.3.0 network. So we will see how far it is. So we will see that it needs one hop, two hops, and three hops. So he will see that he needs three hops to reach to the destination network hop is nothing more than like a jump so like router one will jump one hop to reach to router two and then from router two it has to jump one hop to reach to router three and router three will have to jump one hop to reach to the network that router one wants to go there so this is what is the distance so we see how far it is and that's how the internal gateway protocol which is rip works it will check how far it is so you will use the hops to be as a metric now the vector is in which direction so we see shall i go from this direction or shall i go from that direction all right so we see that it needs to go from this direction then router one on his routing table he will have something like to go to 3.3.3.0 network you have to go to the next in the hop which is the interface of router 2 so it's gonna be over here so this is the direction so that's the only direction he has to use to be able to reach to 3.3.3.0 network so that's exactly what is the distance vector now rip is the oldest dynamic routing protocol so as i said that rip is a, a, a simple routing protocol because it's uh, old all right so it's one of the oldest dynamic routing protocol again it is dynamic so that means we don't have to say like when we use the static routing protocol to go to this network go from here to go from that network go from here we don't do that we just enable rip on the routers and the routers will teach each other about their routes now rip works on udp port 520 so in case you have rip enabled on your network and you just uh, open wireshark to make some sniffing of the traffic you will see that the UDP port 520 will be shown there because RIP works on that port. That means what? Do not um, use any filter rules which block this port because in case you are blocking the UDP port 520, then your RIP network will not work. Now, another point, they said here that RIP uh, has the administrative distance of 120. So what is the administrative distance exactly? Administrative distance, each of the routing protocols, they have an administrative distance. For example, you have RIP 120, you have OSPF 110, uh, you have uh, the connected, once you have a routing protocol connected, something like connected directly to the router, it is zero. The static route, it is one. So what is exactly the administrative distance? Of course, you can change the administrative distance if you want, but the default values is, as they said here, so RIP has 120. So administrative distance means that in case you have two routing protocol that are running on your network, and those two routing protocols take you to the same destination, the routing protocol which has the lowest administrative distance is the one which is going to be used. For example, Let's say that we have on this network RIP. So I have enabled RIP everywhere. All right, now router one from RIP knows how to reach to 3.3.3.0 network. Very good. And he knows that the administrative distance is 120. Now let's imagine that router one is connected to other routers like this. And on also those routers, I have enabled OSPF. So OSPF is also enabled everywhere. Now, the router one will also learn that to reach 3.3.3.0 network, he can also go from OSPF because OSPF do similar function as RIP. So now router one will say, okay, I can reach to 3.3.3.0 from this side over my RIP network. And I can reach also to 3.3.3.0 network from this side over OSPF network. So router one will say, all right, which one shall I use? 
which of the routes is it I have to use the RIP or I have to use the ISPF. And here comes the administrative distance. By default, RIP administrative distance is 120. By default, OSPF administrative distance is 110. The one which has the lowest administrative distance is the one which will be preferred. So now router one will check. Okay, I can go to 3.3.3.0 from RIP or from OSPF. Let's compare the administrative distance. RIP is 120, OSPF is 110. Then believe it or not, router one will choose to go from OSPF to reach to 3.3.3.0 that way. So that's what is the administrative distance. And that's why we need to have administrative distance on each routing protocol. All right. So remember that administrative distance is a value that is used once we have uh, two routes to the uh, network. And um, in, the, in this case, uh, uh, we can play with the administrative distance. We can make the one which we want it or we prefer it to be used lower than the other than this one will be used. Let's go to the next point. Uh, the rep used the uh, hop count as metric. So I have already said what is the hop count and so it counts the hop to reach to the network so for example router one i will see how many hops to reach to 3.3.3.0 network so we see that it is one hop two hops and then there is three so he needs three hops to reach to the network all right let's say that uh, this router also is connected like this to a router here and a router here and a router here and then to here and also we have rip on those routers router one and all the other routers so router one will see that i can reach to 3.3.3.0 network i need one hop two hops i need three hops and i need here four so we say okay i can go from router two way to reach to 3.3.3.0 network I need three hops and I need from down, I need four hops. So which one shall, shall I take? Then he will take this one because it has less hops. So that's the metric that RIP use. Now, let's imagine that you have on this link, you have a very small speed, like something like 56 kilobit per second link here, 56 kilobit per second here. And over here, Let's say you have one gigabit per second, one gigabit per second, one gigabit per second. So would router one choose to go from the first way or from the second? Because from the second you have higher speed. That means your traffic can go much faster. So what do you think? Would it go from the first way, which is the three hops on the, from the four hops? Yes, RIP will choose the first one because still it has the less hops so it will count the hops and you will see okay this is three and this is four no matter what if the bandwidth is more or less or it doesn't care she doesn't understand that trip so we just see which one has the less hops to reach to the destination network he will count them and then the one which has the less hops he will use it so that's something you have to remember now as we are speaking about the hops remember that RIP can go up to 15 hops maximum. That's why I told you in the, the beginning that do not use the RIP when you have a big network. So if you have something like 10 routers, that's fine. More than that, please think about something else like OSWF, for example. Why? Because it has or it can go maximum 15 hops. So what does it mean here? Let me just clear the picture here so I can explain it better. So 15 hops means that in case you have many, 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 many routers here, and let's imagine that this router is router number 15. All right, so that means it is now here hop 14, and then when it comes to here, it's hop 15. Then router three has to make one more hop to this network, which is hop 16. Then in this case, it doesn't work anymore. So it's not possible because RIP can go maximum to 15 hops. So that's what is the max hops that you need to think of. It's 15 hops. Now, in case you have something like this, this is network, 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 and blah, 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 blah. And then you have here network, and then there is a router here, and, and then you have this network at the end. So let's imagine that this is the hop, which is 14. 
then it can take you to that one because this becomes 15, then it's possible. But anything more than 15, the packet will be dropped. All right. Now, how the um, routers know about the routing that each router has. So th they mention here that each router will send its entire routing to the neighbor router every 30 seconds. So what does it mean here? Router one has a network, which is 1.1.1.0 network connected to it. And it has this network over here. Router two has this network and this network connected to it. Router three has this network and 3.3.3.0 network. So each one, they have the routing table of their connected network, correct? It's listed in the routing table. We enable rip here, we enable rip here, we enable rip here. Router three, let's take this example, will send his entire routing table. So all the routing table, he will send it to router two. Router two will check what is the routing table of router three, will check that he has three dos three, which he doesn't know about it. You say, oh, I know now about 3.3.3.0. I will add it on my routing table. And then he will, router C will tell him that I have also this network connected to me, but router two knows about it because it's connected to him. So you say, okay, I know about it. That's fine. But I didn't know about 3.3.3.0 network. I will add it. Router two will send his entire table, including the entry of 3.3. He will send it to router one. Now, Router one will check. He router two will say, I have this network connected to me. Then router one will say, Oh, I don't know about this network. I will add it. He will say to him, I have this network connected to me. Router one will say, I know about this network because it's already connected to me also. But router two will tell him, I have 3.3.3.0 network also that I can reach it from router three. You say, Oh, I don't know about it. Let me add it over here. So that's how router one at the end would know about 3.3.3.0 network. Same from router one when he want to update about his network over here. So router three would know about it at the end and he will add it over here. And believe it or not, this happens every 30 seconds. So every 30 seconds, each router will send his entire routing table to the uh, router, which is nearby for him or the neighbor router. All right, so that's what happened every 30 seconds. Now we have the route timeout uh, time, which is 120 seconds. What does it mean here? We said that every 30 seconds, the router will send his routing table to his neighbor. Let's say that this router, which is router three over here, he uh, had the problem on this network and this network went down. So the 3.3.3.0 went down. Then he took it out from his routing table. And then after 30 seconds, he update this router with this routing table without 3.3.3.0 network. So router two will wait for 120 seconds. So to take out the 3.3.3.0 network from his routing table, he doesn't take it out directly because it may come back online, right? So he just wait for 120 seconds. And in case he doesn't hear about this network anymore, then what he would do, he will just take it out also over here. And then he would also inform router one, router one wait for 120 seconds. And if he doesn't hear anything, then he will take also 3.3.3.0 network from his routing table. All right. So I will stop now this explanation for now. We still have some other points to speak about. But uh, because we are already going almost to 20 minutes, so I will stop this uh, uh, explanation for this lecture and I will continue the rest in the upcoming lecture. So I hope that uh, this lecture up to now was uh, informative for you and I will see you in the upcoming lecture.